Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we are going to be giving the solution to kind of the problem we left off with Arthur Pryor's Proof of God. Well, solution might be a little strong, but we're at least going to be getting a better understanding of it. It's called Curry's Paradox in its most common formulation, its original formulation, and it's basically a paradox that allows you to prove anything. It was later used by Arthur Pryor to prove God's existence because, inevitably, whenever you get a paradox that allows you to prove anything, someone's going to use it to prove God. So, Originally presented, it went as follows. I gave you four sentences in the list. The general point of the list, it seems to me, is to kind of poke at some of the other schemas that people have for non-natural languages that might say, oh, we're not allowed to say that sentences are circular. Well, then the clearly true sentence two wouldn't be allowed or we're not allowed to have sentences that reference sets in which they are a member, like sentence four, but it seems to us still that sentence four is true, so on and so forth. That aside, the point is that we are focusing in on sentence three. There are a lot of different articles and things that have been written on Curry's Paradox. We're not going to go into all of them. I'm just going to give you a basic understanding of why this is a paradox. So, we went through basic understanding of how that's going to be outlined symbolically, and then I went through this nice proof in which I showed that God exists. Of course, the problem with this that hopefully many of you have noticed is that we could replace G with literally anything. It could be replaced with God does not exist, and we could prove that God does not exist in the same way. Or we could replace it with a contradiction. You know what? Let's go and do that. So, if the third sentence in the list is true, then P and not P, so on and so forth. What we will do, we'll go through the same process, and we will end up with proving a contradiction. And, by indirect proof, imagine we were doing one giant indirect proof, this would just show that the laws of logic themselves seem to have a problem. The laws that we are basing our understanding of reality on have led us to a contradiction. Just by only using things like conditional proof and identity and modus ponens, some of the very basic understandings of logic, we've led ourselves to a contradiction. This seems to be a problem for logic. There are some people who have posited possible solutions to this paradox that I'm not going to get into in this video because they get a lot deeper into philosophy and they're pretty complicated. Hopefully in a future video I'll have a chance to do that. You should check out the SEP article on Curry's Paradox if you're curious. But note that these solutions that are proposed have their own problems, which have not been solved by philosophers yet. This is still an active problem for philosophy. And with that, we will introduce three problems for logic and knowledge. That was Curry's Paradox. The next couple short little videos we're going to be doing are going to be on Fitch's Paradox, and we will revisit the Gettier problem. We will show one possible solution and then show an objection to that solution, so pushing the conversation one step further. Watch this video and more at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.